telling people about how to do things. When you thought about working on any of the scripts you're working on or stories you're telling, where do you start? Where do you start with your characters? How do you set up the perspective you want to convey to everybody and make sure it is accessible to everybody at the same time? Well, my thing is, um, I, I kind of work differently than a lot of uh, creators from what I hear. Uh, I go plot first, you know, and then I fit my character into the plot I want to tell and what character best serves that plot. You know, um, I've always felt that, you know, if you start with the character, uh, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But you're gonna run through the gamut of the same kind of emotions and problems and angst that, you know, most characters have, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's just the way it goes. But for me, uh, I look at plot first because that's the story that is going to wow your your prospective buyers in terms of your elevator pitch, so to speak. Like when I came to Underworld, um, you know, it really started with Lynn Wiseman because he's the one who came to me and said, well, I got an opportunity and there are these people who want to do a werewolf movie. Uh, what do you think? And I said, well, not much, you know. <laughs> because, like, you know, but remember though, this was like 19, it was like 99. And there has only been maybe two or three werewolf movies that people really talk about. You know what they are? Yeah. Howling. The Howling. Howling. And the original Wolfman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Yeah. And, you know, but the Howling was influential to me because it was the first time we saw an actual bipedal, snout nosed creature. I was like, oh my goodness, now that is something I like. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, there is an inherent non-sexiness, you know, coolness with uh, werewolves because they're monstrous, you know. If you look at the album now, you know, you don't realize that the hair is extremely nappy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and it's a limitation, you know, of the technology they had back then. But uh, when we met finally, you know, to talk about the project we were gonna do, I said, well, the one I came up with, he liked, but there was another one I had in the back of my head and I said, okay, what if, we do a Romeo and Juliet story. But instead of Montagues and Capulets, you have werewolves on one side, but vampires on the other. And make it this surrealistic interracial love story that spans a race war that has lasted 600 years. See, now that's something people are like, oh, dang, God, I want to see that. But, you know, they might not go for, well, you know, I have this vampire, and, you know, she's in love with this werewolf, and I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. You know, but that's the problem you run into, and that's why I do what I do, and why I start where I start. And so, um, that's the way I approach creativity, and, you know, so far I've had a measure of success with that, you know. And I think, uh, you know, everything, everything works differently for different people, you know, whatever floats your boat. But that's what has worked to me. I don't know if that answered your question. You didn't answer the question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Travis, same question.